work, man, that don't scare us I get up, I go hard like I'm George Harris Make plays, break lanes, push weight, break chains Go hard, kick ass, take names I'm oh, being good, I'ma be great I'm gonna carry that weight Earn my stripes, my merits I gotta go hard like I'm George Harris yeah. Welcome to Fight Night Flashbacks I am with a very special guest The UFC legend himself Former UFC heavyweight champion this guy is on the Mount Rushmore of the UFC. It's my boy, Frank Mayer, the legend. What's up, legend? A lot of people call you legend. No, not any, though. Really? Yeah. Man, I'd only, if I had your career, I'd only have my kids refer to me as legend. Yeah, I'm going to tell the wife that. Now. Tell her. <laughs> hey, when I walk in, just call me legend. Yeah, Be cool, works. man. Now, for this show, we always look at some like key moments in your fight career. You have so many. So I told my team I'm going to stay out of it because I'm such a fan of yours. I'm going to stay out of it. We're going to end with uh, Big Nog for personal reasons, but um, we're going to kick it off with your very first fight in the UFC with uh, Roberto Tarvin. And at this, you're 22. Yeah. 22 years old, the UFC. And this is before, what, what year is this? This was 2001, November, so. Jesus Christ, dude. I had two fights and professional shows outside of this with no amateur career. And uh, is the story, didn't Joe Silva have something to do with you? Yeah, Joe would come in, it was funny. So uh, I'm training at a place at the time called Modern Martial Arts in Las Vegas. And uh, I had trained at a place called Nevada Partners for boxing. And then I had a buddy there goes, you know, a, a high school friend of mine. Oh, my older brother now is, is doing this jujitsu stuff. You know what I mean? So I started going down to there and training. So I'd probably been training for about two years in jujitsu. And then, uh, and obviously interested in mixed martial arts, but at that time there was no money in it. Yeah, you know? it was more or less just another, you know, uh, proving ground. For Something me. to do. Well, I just like to test myself. Yeah, you know I mean, I go out there and fight and learn. And like, okay, and they go, I, and, I, and people think that's weird, but I'm like, dude, guys do that all over the place. So how many all the time. fifty year old guys are entering jujitsu tournaments or, or tough mutters? I'm yeah. all, they're not getting paid to do that shit. Nope. You do it to test yourself, yep. and and so that's really what I saw it as was an opportunity to go out there and do that. And so Joe had came in on a ten speed. <laughs> and parks his bike and comes in to watch his training. He goes, yeah, I'm the vice president for the UFC. <laughs> and I'm looking out. I see this guy, five foot four. He's kid. tiny. Joe yeah. Silva, just yeah, for yeah, the yeah, viewers, yeah. Like Joe Silva's tiny. Yeah, five yeah. four. You Short know? king. Coming in the gym, talking about he's the vice president for the UFC. I'm like, did, did, did you just come in on a ten speed? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, okay. Is that your schwit out yeah, there? Yeah. Like, and not like you were out exercise. He's wearing jeans. You know? Yeah. I was like, All right. So uh, I was like, sure. And so he watched me roll around. He asked me, Have you ever just been fighting? I'm like, Yeah, very much so. You know, I'm interested in it. So uh, I actually had gotten the two fights outside of the UFC. I think my first fight was in Hook and Shoot. It was in uh, July, and I fought again in like August up in Northern California. I think it was a, a IFC International Fight Championship. I just remember it was like in a Pentagon, and the guy there wasn't like, a lot going on. Back yeah, then. no, it was weird. It was crazy stuff. And then, uh, and then. Uh, it was like on the path to wanting to be in the UFC. So I was living with my jiu-jitsu coach at the time. I had just gotten my purple belt. And uh, he comes and knocks on my door. He goes, hey, there was a, a falling out. You know, a, the a, a opponent got hurt. Some guy was a silver medalist and blew his knee out. And he's supposed to fight Roberto Travin. I'm like, oh. And at the time, Roberto Travin was a four-time world champion in Brazilian jiu-jitsu Jesus black Christ. belt. You know, I'm like, oh, shit. You know, and he fought. I think he was 4-0 and in the MMA. And so, like, you know, he needs an opponent on 30 days notice. You're a local kid. You know, they realize you're taking a fight short notice and it's kind of stacked against you, but you know, you get the UFC contract. I was like, all right, well, shit, let's do it. You know what I mean? Gangsta. 30 days, let's go. You know what I mean? And I've always been, you know, I've never said no to anything. I like yeah. challenges, you know? And so that's how the opportunity came about. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, and Joe Silva, he retired. I think once they sold or retired. Yeah, 2012. When they, the sunset. Well, I think he lives in like Virginia or DC. Yeah, yeah has a shit. super nice gym, trains there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you ever talk to me, the whole downstairs of his house is a beautiful gym. Just trains and hangs out, reads comic books. It yeah, a good life. yeah, that makes sense. Still doesn't drive, though. Doesn't drive? No, no. A millionaire with no car. Hilarious. <laughs> he's like, oh, cars break down. I, never, I don't think he's ever had a driver's license. He was a savage, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, Not my, somebody to debate with if you were on the wrong side. I learned the hard way. My, my, I remember my manager was negotiating some fight. And, you know, I've always been like a business guy. I'm like, I want to hear it, man. They give me some tips to negotiate. He's like, you don't want to hear the way they talk about you guys. I go, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm no. telling you. And he goes, all right, I'm going to put them on speaker, but don't say your hair. And you, he, he, dude, yep. I, I, I had tears in my eyes. I was like, I oh, shit. No, I, I got blessed. I should not have heard this. 
throughout my 20s and you know early 30s joe and i would always you know go eat dinner together hang out and he would, you know, would mentor me on things and uh, how he talked to you where he thought you weren't there is how he yeah. talked to me knowing i was there yeah and with my wife chime in and too so yeah there was some i'm like i tell like hey we're gonna eat dinner can you eat like a xanax or something yeah, break <laughs> like, your heart yeah, i'm like you know, it's but like you nah, have yeah. to be that way yeah, yeah like being the matchmaker and dealing with all these personalities had to be that way before you start the fight is it true that when you were in the ufc or you you had to be in the ufc at the time you and Roy Nelson were the security at Spearmint Rhino? Yeah. Who the fuck? Can you imagine? <laughs> like, hey, get out of here. And he's like, I'm not going anywhere. And like, security. And then you and Roy fucking Nelson yeah, show up? That was true, yeah. Oh, really? That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. He actually worked a different shift than I did yeah, because that way he helped his training and stuff. Uh, I worked the night shifts because, you know, I was the most money and didn't really care about getting good sleep. So, I mean, up till uh, 2008, I would work four nights a week. You That's know, nuts. Work from, you know, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. I would take the week off before I went to fight. So even when I fought for the UFC title, when I fought uh, uh, Tim Sylvia, I literally worked up until my That's train. That's nuts, dude. And then the week before the fight, took that weekend off to try to get my sleep schedule fixed so i wasn't such a you know a, yeah a, a night owl yeah and then as soon as i would fight i would next week i was back at work and when you were a ufc champ you're working at spirit i know yeah well yeah. i mean i bet that wasn't fun at all yeah <laughs> okay let's see the fight <laughs> let's save both our marriages yeah, be quiet let's save the fight man. <laughs> you're in trouble what a time though man I, yeah. we could go back we had a time machine all right let's see this fight man. and this fight's in vegas this fight's in Vegas. What, what uh, venue is it? Uh, it's MGM, MGM Grand. Yep. I'm big boy fight. Do you remember who the main event was? Oh, damn, I don't. Uh, it, look at you, dude. Yeah, you I still don't. got that thick neck. And and you're in the frick, Sungas? Yeah. Uh, my kids the other day were making fun of those shorts. I was like, uh, have you guys not seen my first couple fights? Yeah. <laughs> like, hold on. Before you pass judgment, you know what I mean? Like, Yo, these are Glass baggy. house, guys. Yeah, glass these, houses. These are baggy <laughs> compared to <laughs> Yeah, I remember they were like, oh, well, just being very literally of his guard here. So that's why I dropped him against the cage. And that's why I always understood wrestling at a higher level when I incorporated my jiu-jitsu. It's like, you can see here, I'm just making sure his bottom arm can't plant down and then trying to keep my head in there. And then I was actually thinking I could get a Dars. And I was like, oh, no, I'll just go ahead and take his back. And that was a mistake there of reaching that way and allowing the underhook to come up. But I didn't learn that until years later. And he, uh, yeah, because jiu-jitsu is clearly his background. Your striking is even better at this point, even though he has more fights. We can just tell your striking is a little better than his. Yeah, no, he, he probably would have been more suited now if he would have been a tool fiber. Yes. And then you're at this point, you're a uh, purple belt, you Yeah, said? purple belt jiu-jitsu, he's a black belt, and, and was able to catch him with this arm bar. Holy and that's, shit. Smooth-ass arm bar. Well, God, dog. Someone a black belt, your first fucking fight? That was a good How day. much did you make for that fight, you remember? I think it was two and two. I'm sorry, 2000? Yeah, 2000 and 2000. So I made four grand. Four grand. And back then, you were crumb. I thought it was awesome. I went and bought a new, uh, the new Xbox. Hell yeah, I played yeah. Halo. <laughs> 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 yeah. I bought a, 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 at that time, I think I got like a, uh, it was like a 50 inch screen. I thought I was, I thought I had made it in life. Yeah, yeah hell yeah. Good, like, Those yeah. were the days, man. Yeah. And then the next fight we're going to watch, again, there's so freaking many good fights that you have. You know, it's funny, actually, going back to UC, they don't talk about it widely, but it actually broke his arm in the fight. So Did you? Yeah, it's cracked it. So uh, First of many. Yeah, first of many. So when they talk about how many times you've broken people's arms, I'm like, well, a couple of them put hardware in, so I know it's confirmed. That one, I didn't know if it was confirmed or not, because later on he had a thing on, and his coach was speaking Brazilian to my coach, like, yeah, it's broke. Like, oh, oh, thanks. Yeah, you've snapped a lot of dudes' arm. You're because your jujitsu. I feel like you're one of the, especially at heavyweight, like the first jujitsu where, the torque and like the for like it was just ferocious. When yeah. you got something, it was like you weren't doing it just to win the. It was like, see that's ferocious. the thing. Like, and I keep that mentality now when I train guys. I hear people go, "Oh, I didn't get you to tap." I'm like, "See right there, your vocabulary tells me your brain's not in the right spot. Mm. Tapping is not an objective. Tapping is for the guy on the other side to protect himself during training. Yeah, there's no other option. No, I'm not trying to make you tap. I'm trying to break your arm. Even yeah. in training, I'm going to break your arm, and if you tap, I'll stop. Yep. Right, because that should be the objective in your mind. I'm trying to destroy that limb, so there's one less limb between me and your throat. You know what I mean? Jesus because eventually, Christ. I want to get to your neck to cut off the blood to your brain if you train for tapping now you're making it too much sportative and you're just trying to hurt people like oh i want you to cry uncle yeah. i'm all why are you trying to get him to cry uncle what does yeah. uncle mean you know what yeah. i mean like i'm trying to make you unconscious you're you trying know? to put you in the emergency exactly so so even in the gym like i tell people oh the guy was a dick i'm like look if you go fast you're a dick but if you're training you put me in an arm bar and you're slowly applying pressure and i'm not tapping and if i don't tap to it it's my fault yeah, it's not yours because how do you know that it works or not yep. you got to keep applying pressure and go oh well i guess it did work and if it doesn't then 
I don't tap. And it's like, well, you're not breaking the arm. Yeah. It's not cracking. Then you know you have improper technique. We had to restructure what you're doing wrong. Are you messing up the fulcrum, the base, the lever? Is it a wrong pivot point? What, what are you doing wrong that it's not causing the person's arm to fracture? And if you train like that, then when you get in the real situation, you'll be yeah. ready to go. Then you Otherwise, just got to speed it up. Yeah. To me, it's like playing, you know, if we were to play baseball, if you pitch it over the plate and you throw it at 70 miles an hour, but you use proper technique, I'm good. I can learn. And then in the game, all I got to do is speed it up, right? But if I'm throwing 90, but I'm throwing way out of the strike box to protect you, yep. or I throw it into the dirt, now I got to do it in the game, and I'll put it over the plate. You've it's never like, seen it. Yeah. Bro, you don't even know what you're doing. You haven't even done the proper technique now. And when you say you're, co like, uh, as far as coaching, are you only coaching your daughter, who's a freaking savage? Oh, are you only really coaching her? You, there's well, I help out a syndicate with John Wood and train the guys there. You know, we'll help out when guys want and stuff. But, uh, but for the most part, yeah, Bella's the one I'm most serious about. Uh, you know, because Makes sense. Uh, well, you know what? <laughs> I tried talking her out of being a fighter for many, many years, and then you know, finally, when it became evident that I wasn't going to win this, I was like, "All right, well, let me shift directions and help you make sure that it goes the right way." And she trains the same way, same demeanor as her dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Sad. and actually, like. Uh, to a curse, I've been blessed with intelligence, which I tell people sometimes is not a good thing for a fighter. Being too intelligent is actually bad. You know what I mean? Like, Agree. To a point. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes being a little dumb helps you. you Ignorance I mean? is bliss. Yeah, like, it a is. A lot of times when we would be in the back of the locker room and guys weren't nervous, so I'd just look at them like, that's because you're stupid. Yeah. Like, you should be dumb. Yeah, I mean, you, should, you should be shitting your pants. Yeah, if, if you're not, you know, then there's this pendulum can swerve, or swing too far the other way. Let's take a little break from chatting with the myth, the legend. One of the Hall of Famers of the UFC heavyweight division. We're talking about Frank Mayer. Frank Mayer is a badass. And all you guys are badasses. And listen, it's okay to be scared if you're a badass. Because we live in a digital world and you should be worried about protecting your identity. It's okay to be a little scared. Maybe you're not a black belt in jiu-jitsu online. All right? And you're growing your family. Maybe you're taking out mortgages. And you're like, man... I'm doing all this stuff online. I started thinking about my identity protection, and my friends at Allstate got you covered. You got to check out Allstate Identity Protection, the best identity protection from a brand you can trust. Allstate? Come on, they've been around since we were kids. We know Allstate. So much of life is logging on to digital lives of our friends and yours, right? That's why Allstate developed an identity protection product that protects your digital life just like they do your physical life. With Allstate Identity Protection, they'll reimburse you up to one million buckaroos for out-of-pocket expenses, lost wages, legal fees. They got you covered. Wow, they'll also cover money stolen from your bank accounts, which I've had happen. 401ks, HSAs, and tax returns, they got you covered. Listen, Listen, Allstate's been protecting you for over 90 years. That's how long they've been doing it. What I love about Allstate Identity Protection is I have a peace of mind, all right? And I'm covering the whole squad, my whole fam. All the shops are covered. We live in a digital world, man. It's easy for people to access and take our identity. But that's why I'm backed up by Allstate. So when you think identity protection, think Allstate Identity Protection. To find out if your employer offers Allstate Identity Protection, head to AIP.com slash shop. If not, get a 30-day free trial at AIP.com slash shop. That's AIP.com slash shop. S-C-H-A-B. Uh, Bella has intelligence and then f her natural ability right now the, she tested at the PI and this was a year and a half ago and they tested her against every athlete on the female side every weight class you name the girl if she signed with the UFC she was on that list Bella was stronger and more explosive than all of them she blew them all out of the water she was the strongest most explosive athlete God, they had God. Ever signed. It's hard not, like, when you have that type of talent, it's hard not to be like, all right. Yeah. But then Bella also has what I always lacked is that, like, right now, Bella is up at Iowa. She has a scholarship to wrestle. She won national. She has a scholarship to She's wrestle. She's a national Iowa? champion wrestler. My it, daughter's a five time state champion. She's a national champion uh, wrestler. She's in champion? high school. And in then school. now she's a freshman year of college. The red shirting this year, she's at Iowa, which, you know, they just opened up, you know, the, the pretty the, good the, school. Pretty school, good it's to wrestle at, school. Right? Yeah, yeah. Holy fuck, she had full ride to Iowa? Yeah, for no, wrestling? no, no, full ride. For, they don't do full ride. So they have, like, I think about eight scholarships for the whole still. team. And they cut them up, you know what I mean? Yeah, and so, uh, still. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, so she's up there wrestling. And so they just did the uh, strength test again. And, and she has the highest vertical on the team. She's the strongest oh, she's girl on the team. But then they did. Now, here's the part where Bella's different than me, and this is why she'll be much better than I ever was as a fighter. Um, 
she weighs 157 and she's 12% body fat. They actually told her she can't go down in the weight class. Bella eats the same thing every day. It's like chicken, rice, vegetable, portion control. If, you know, she has animals at the house, you know, she has, we have about 10 bunnies and or 12 bunnies and like 10 chickens. She wakes up before school every day, would take care of them and feed them. And she does the most grinding, most mundane work that I would find mind wrenching. And yeah. I would find a way out of it. I would, I'm the guy going, all right, cool. Maybe I can convince this person if I pay them to do, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm I'd be like, if I just release yeah, I'm trying to bunnies. leverage myself yeah. through this, right? Yeah, me too. I've thought about it too. Like I right mean, now, we're taking care of the go. bunnies, and I'm yeah. like, you know, if an accident happens, if yeah. I just leave the water on long enough, yeah. you know the I mean? coyote comes <laughs> in here. Yeah. By coyote, would be I'm like, me Dad, with the my coyote gun. in the foot yeah. doesn't look like yeah. they, they wear size 13. Like, yeah. yeah, they did this one. Yeah, this, weird. This coyote did. He, he so, wore the same shoes as Dad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so uh, she has the discipline to do the things. All three of my kids actually have it, and I think that's because that was always my weakness. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, here's my weakness. I can't stick to a diet. I can't stick to this. Doing the hard stuff, the mundane, boring, the brush your teeth type man i suck at being consistent with the exciting shit to go spar to go go lift heavy yeah, you're in i'm in i and love you're that a freak shit, right so you got away with i it. love that shit but but as far as like all right now we need you to go home and make sure you don't put on video games and sleep nine hours i'm like oh shit you know what i mean but i'm showing up to practice hard. like what'd yeah. you do i stayed up all night on the xbox yeah ah, you god know damn it yeah that was me your daughter's no. not doing that no she damn, grinds. I had no idea she was that big of a freak i knew yeah. she was a freak yeah mental she's doing well no in fact actually like i always am a head coach in every endeavor but i like having other coaches like you know robert dries though he's a you know he's a monster yes right Phenomenal mind. Yes. So he's her jujitsu coach. Jesus you know I mean? Christ. You know, so you know, when he steps in and does stuff, I don't say anything. I'll make adjustments to go, hey, you know, Bella, like that's cool for jujitsu, but in MMA we're actually gonna make this variation. You need a punch in the face. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. go and do this. You know, and but Robert already makes most that's of the fight in the UFC. Yeah, yeah he's, he's almost ninety nine percent on. We almost agree yeah. on everything. Um but there are times I've had to tell her coaches from a very young age, I'm like, Hey, you know how you do those mental tests with people? You tell the kids all to stand like in a push-up position. You leave the room or you put them through some kind of like how far they'll go. I'm like, you can't do that to Bella. She should do it. She'll kill herself. Yes. She'll die. Wow. If you say, hey, go in the sauna and last one out. I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't, don't do that. that. Yeah, she she will it. literally kill herself. Yeah, she has that Kobe mentality. She will die. Well, if she... you said right now, let's all go in a sauna and we're all going to be in here. I'm like, if she doesn't win, she's dying. Yep. Like, like either you're going to have to die too. Like whoever wants to beat she's her, just Dude, assume if, you're going to die. If my kid rests out of Iowa, out of a Iowa fucking tattoo on my neck the hawk eye on my neck I'm like, i got the hat the cap yeah. no dude i'd be fucking yeah, i can't out. wait till they start doing some of the oh i can't yeah, wait dude, that's if you want i'll let you know if there's ever a time fuck you yeah, yeah. yeah hell yeah i'll go all right let's see this fight now this is tim sylvia to me tim sylvia has to be one of the scariest guys to ever compete at uh yeah i think at this team. time he was 17 and 0 with like 16 knockouts he's like six seven it's, good yeah. footwork like yeah. even tim sylvia now if you think about the champion of the ufc now in Francis, or you think about no, uh, technically Cyril straight, gone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would put a prime Tim Silva against any of them. Yeah, long boxer, knew Ridiculous how to use Super wrestling. hard to take down. Couldn't take him down. Yeah. He's a monster. And see, I actually knew that when we strategized for the fight. I'm like, you know what I think I can do? I think I can keep blasting his little lot knob legs. So that was my goal, actually, was just keep him in the legs. And then when he took me down here, I thought he was just going to stand up. So we're sitting there, and he's moving me towards the cage. I'm like, oh, really? Holy like, shit. Like, you want to play this game? You're going to do this with me? Wow. All right, cool. So then I just Boom! swung on the arm. And this Herb Dean was like, I didn't see. Oh, yeah, there it breaks. God, dog. Play for keeps. Oh, so I'm like, all right, I know it broke. I'm just going to keep ripping on it and see what more One of the greatest highlights of all time in the UFC. Because I think that was when people were like, oh, shit, jiu-jitsu. And uh, Herb Dean's like, dude, your, your arm. Yeah. And that shows you what a fucking savage. Have you ever talked to Herb about it? No. Yeah, but so they're sitting there in the dark. At that point, Dana and everybody's freaking out on Herb. They think he stopped the fight wrong. Hilarious. They just screwed up the heavyweight match. Like, what do you do? Do you restart him? If you restart him, do you put him back in the arm bar? Like, what do we do? Which, thank God, they didn't restart me back in the arm no. bar with his arm. Like, yeah. You know, at least he had a plate. It would have been one armed. You know, he probably would have took it off completely. So, uh, so all this pandemonium is happening. Like, oh, you screwed it up. Even to the point of, after the fight, uh, uh, Bruce didn't even announce me as the new heavyweight champ. He just announced me as the winner. Oh, hell no. He, he apologized about it to this day about it. The fans are all boo. Right? But Everybody's booing. And then when they showed it up on the prompter, that's when he had Did you see it go? Yeah. Pop. Well, even right there, that girl, the Margaret Goodman, the, the physician at that time, she's like kind of like touching it and she's like looking at her, like, well, I don't know. He's saying he's fine. Like, you know, she's looking at him, like, ah, well, you know, like, is it good? Is it not? You know, and then they're like, well, what's going on? Like, so there's all this like confusion on what's about to occur. 
And then when they see the video pop, and then they came back and said that, you know, obviously. But you knew it popped. Oh, yeah. Sure, you knew. Well, not even just the feeling of it breaking. Like, it went from, like, holding on to a stick to all of a sudden just feels like a bag of potato chips. Yeah. Like, there's completely no connection now from his wrist to his upper arm. And it it shows you what a badass Tim Sylvia is, because even he was like, why why would you stop that? And everyone was like, dude. Well, he actually told me later on that he knew he broke his arm. And he was hoping to get a restart, which makes him a savage, right? I agree. He's trying to get the fight restarted so that he knows he has about 10, 15 seconds to start swinging and maybe catch me with a left with a knockout. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know what? Hey, man. Kudos to him. <laughs> My hat's off, man. Because I'd been like, hey, take me to the hospital well, right now. So then he walks out of the ring. He tells that part. And he's trying to play it off that he's not hurt. So he has his hands up. You know where that happens, right? <laughs> One of the fans high fives him. <laughs> he's all, oh. <laughs> no, so when we go back to the locker room, I can hear him screaming. Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah. Yeah. Because then the adrenaline folds out there, you see the pop real big. Oh, it's bad. I mean, yeah. what, literally. Well, it broke his radius and his ulna, so he had to have a plate put in his arm. <laughs> Terrible. Dude. Yeah. Like, worst case scenario for a fighter. Like, you're yeah. out for a hot second. Shaq's front row. Yeah, like, oh, young and Shaq. Lean, right? <laughs> yeah, see, at this point, it was like, oh, boo. Yeah, like Nickelback back there, too. Just crushing it. Oh, yeah. Those that. were the days. <laughs> Yeah, Tim Silva set to. I, I, I was watching his highlights the other day because I'm a weirdo. I'm like, oh, this guy in his prime, he can compete right yeah. now. Both you guys could. Like, uh-huh. you look at the champs now, I'm like, man, Tim Silva would give Francis and Cyril Gahn some problems. Uh, Ugh, it's bad. I good mean, reach, they good play job. that all the time. I mean, it's one of the best highlights ever. Nuts, those dude. And, dude, and that's fucking prime Tim Silva. He was such yeah, a savage. You see how it just bowed completely oh, and just ripped to pieces. Oh, God, dude. And just e- even the way you're controlling his posture, you know, with yeah. your legs. Bridging like, out yeah. to make myself have a oh, up. You know, and that's actually why I train people that way in my gym. If we're rolling and you put me in an arm bar, and if I pick you up to my waist and you haven't stopped me, you got to stop the arm bar in my gym. Like, okay, let go. Because if we were fighting, you fucked up already. Correct. I'm going to slam you I'm into a, the mat. Correct. So either learn to let go of the arm bar when someone's lifting you or learn how to make sure you can avoid being slammed. Yep. So don't use the rule system because then when you do that, then you go to the fight. It's like, well, do you know how to stop a slam? Well, no, because no one does it in yep. practice. I'm like, yep. so, I mean, there's ways to do things to make it safe, to simulate to where you're prepared for the fights, yeah. you know? That makes sense. Mazig- that's Mazagati, right? Yeah. And this is, dude, this is, uh, so you had this fight. Uh, this is UFC 81. This is uh, because you fought Brock twice, twice. right? In 81 and then UFC 100. We split wins. UFC 81, because that was right around the Super Bowl. I remember I was at the Super Bowl in Phoenix, and we found a bar to watch this fight. I've never been more into a fight, cared more about a fight that I wasn't in than this one, because I felt like it was the UFC fighters versus the rest, like the yeah. WWE guy. See, and I was like, oh, Frank better fucking win this, yeah. man. Because I just, and I've met Brock. He's a great guy. And I fought his training partner. We've been on the same cards. He's such a good dude. He's actually a good dude. But there's like so much, an- yeah. you guys were Connor and Aldo before Connor and Aldo. Yeah. Like the animosity, dude, and the build up. It was, I mean, to me, one of the top like rivalry fights of all no. fucking time. Man. So funny you say that, right? So, it's like speed and technique versus yeah, like, so, just a brute. So going into this fight, I didn't really follow pro wrestling that well. I mean, I knew who like Hulk Hogan is and whatnot. You know what I mean? But, but like, like a grown if man. you sit there and go, well, hey, like you know, who, at this point, if you just said hey, who's like a different pro, I'm like, ah, I don't. Really I couldn't tell you either. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't know, man. I'm not that I'm not. You know, hey, that's cool, but I'm, yeah, I'm just also I don't lose thing, my right? mom. Yeah, yeah, you know, I don't know. You know, and so. Uh, uh, I looked at him as a guy that was a two-time national champ, 105. And That's three. how you should look. That's how I was thinking of him. I'm like, oh, man, this guy's a high level. I'm watching wrestling matches. Like, hey, man, this guy took Stephen Neal, you know, who's one of the greatest heavyweight wrestlers we've ever had. This guy's top five probably, you know what I mean, of course, collegiate wrestlers. I'm like, phenomenal wrestler, beast, monster. So then it's backstage. We're doing all the different interviews and whatnot. And I forgot. I wish I could remember who it was. But as I'm walking out of one of the rooms, one of the other fighters, he goes, hey, man, like, hey, you know what? You got to make sure you take care of this one. This is pro wrestling versus MMA. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I like walked off like, oh, wait a minute. No, no, this ain't pro wrestling versus MMA. Yeah. This is a legitimate college wrestler who's converted oh, over to MMA. Like, freak. No, like, no. You guys think he's a pro wrestler? Like, no. oh, damn it, yeah. man. Like, that actually kind of made me nervous. I'm like, oh, this isn't fair. You yeah, know, there's some pressure now. Yeah, I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure. And it's like, hey, you're fighting an actor. I'm like, yeah, an actor who was an Olympian gold, you know, like before. Like, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm he's like, a no. pro wrestler, yeah. but he is a set freak. Dude. <laughs> Fucking freak. Which obviously showed off throughout, you know, throughout his career. Hit it. Young Brewster, yeah, he has that flat top, the dick tattoo on his chest. Yeah, and you guys were just talking so much shit going into this. And then the second one was even worse. Yeah. 
But he, I mean, top, and then here's the thing about Brock. Like, the, you, can't, you can't take anything away from Brock because he didn't have a ton of experience. They I threw one him fight. to the fucking wolves, man. Well, you know what? He, he had to, what? Heath Herring was one of his first fights. Yeah. Steamrolled him, and Heath Herring's a veteran, fought yeah. pride. Like, he well, fought big wrestlers like him, yeah, too. Brock, he fought like no uh, punk, man. Uh, the big cat, uh, Tom uh, Erickson. Tom and, Erickson, yeah, yeah, yes. And pride. I mean, he had a win over him. Yep. Kicked him in the body, and, like, you know, so. I thought it was a smart move from the UFC because here they give it to him. At this time, I'm a former champ fighting him, and here hits his debut. So if he doesn't do well, he gets caught or something happens. It's your first fight. You took on two big fight veteran. Right, right. Yeah. If he wins, he's automatically propelled. You're legitimate. Here you beat a legitimate guy. We can move you right within two fights into it's a title smart, shot. Smart matchmaking. Yep. Yeah, he, he was so talented. He even played football and then tried out for the Vikings. He did, and I think he made it all the way up to like the final he cut. He made it to right? the final cut, made yeah. it further than I did, about three weeks further than me. And were you were nervous for this fight going into it? Yeah, oh, definitely. You know what oh, I, mean? I knew how good of his wrestling was. I knew how strong he was, and, and and also too, like not even just strength. I always tell people like one thing is is his quickness. You know what I mean? Like oh, so athletic, man. so fast. Yeah, he, he, we haven't seen anything like him. No, nope. really haven't. And the game plan for this, because you knew he was going to shoot that last double. I knew that as long as the fight went on, eventually my MMA catch experience him. would catch him. That was kind of, I mean, as at that moment, probably should have had a better like plan A, plan B, plan C. But it was kind of like, hey, man, as long as you can't get me out of there, eventually, you know what I mean? Like there, you see, like now I'm starting to gain confidence. Like, okay, that was closer. Because yep. the first couple arm bars weren't even close. That arm bar, he had to jump. He landed on his yep. hip. He gave up position. It fell down, and uh, I was like, all right, as long as I keep moving, keep in the fight, keep it here, eventually he's going to make a mistake. And especially when you, you know, leg locks, ankle locks, like he's not, it, I don't give, there's not enough hours in the day to no. learn that, that like you're going down a weird rabbit hole, man. No, and that's so why I just wanted to keep move. it even jujitsu here. Yeah. Just, all right, keep going for arm bar, arm bar, and then this he stood up, filthy. I was like, all right. Yeah, this was filthy. I was able to swing over, almost oh. kind of like a reap, the pulled back, and then was able to lock the figure four on the leg. Happiest I've ever been for a fight. That I was involved in. I felt like it was like, oh, it's for oh, them. Awesome. I was like, fuck. Yeah, no, it really was. It came down to it. So many people afterwards, you know what I mean? Was It's MMA versus pro wrestling. I'm like, all right. Which then made me happy because eventually by the time it brocked in, it's like, oh, cool. now he's an MMA fighter. He's not a pro wrestler now. He's a guy who's Correct. trained, you know what I mean? Which, like you said, dude, the guy was a collegiate wrestler, a high level guy. Oh, you know I mean, what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah. top five biggest freaks we had in the UFC. Like, he's such a savage. Yeah. Look at Joe Silva. You, you knew a guy. We were like, how's that 10 speed, man? Yeah. <laughs> you guys go way back. Yeah. That there you see way more happier than that that the Tim Sylvia fight. Obviously the controversy with Tim Sylvia breaking is Yeah, that was hard to be deal, like right? excited about it after the Tim Sylvia fight, just because like everybody's booing. No one's happy. So then I tried to reap, he jumped over, I was gonna come up behind <sighs> with a calf cutter and then just I mean, you know how hard that is to pull off a knee bar like that at this level? Let's take a little break from chatting with Frank Mir. We're some chatty Cathy's, right? But it's a fun one. This guy's fights are insane. But listen, if you're watching this, you're like, man, Frank and Brendan, they look like they're in the zone. These two are chatting back and forth like a debate over here. This is fantastic. How do they get into that flow state? Well, this flow state that experts talk about when you're focused on on just a single task and you're knocking things out, you're creating things, you're remembering names. Here's a little secret. It's called Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain by On It. My friends at On It created the best nootropic on the freaking planet. It's going to help you speed up your brain, help you remember names, help your cognitive abilities in your brain, man. I need all the help I can get and thank God for Alpha Brain from On It. And here's the thing, Alpha Brain's so sure you're going to love they're so sure you're going to love their product, Alpha Brain, that they're going to give you a guarantee or your money back. You don't even have to ship the product back. Keep the product. We're so sure you're going to like it. They can guarantee your money back if you don't, but you will. So don't worry about it. Don't sweat it, man. And if you're worried about your sense of caffeine or whatever it is, you're like, I can't even drink coffee. Cool. Alpha Brain's caffeine-free. No jitters. All natural. We got you, baby. On it. The best supplements on planet Earth. The best nootropic on planet Earth. You can save 10% off by going to onit.com slash shop. S-C-H-A-B. Onit.com slash shop. All right? You get 10% off Alpha Brain. Or you can go to your local Walmart. Who wants to go to Walmart? Just go to onit.com slash shop. S-C-H-A-B. You get 10% off Alpha Brain and all supplements and workout gear at onit.com slash shop. You're welcome. 
You're probably watching us at work right now. You probably went to the coffee machine. You're at the water cooler, and everybody's talking about this new thing called Kratom. You're like, what is Kratom? Kratom is basically a limitless pill. You ever seen that movie with Bradley Cooper where he's just popping that little pill and getting things done? He's doing algebra and dealing with stocks, and he basically became Elon Musk. Yeah, man, that's Kratom. That's what it does for you. And here's a little secret for you kids out there. It's also all natural. It's all safe. We got you covered, man. And if you got to try Kratom, you're thinking about it, you need to go with a company you can trust. And that's where my friends at Happy Hippo come in. It's the only brand I trust. And Happy Hippo, they have an all, a variety of forms. Gummies, they got cool pink lemonade shots. They got regular pills, which I also take. But if I'm, if I'm on the go and I'm about to go on stage, do stand-up, I'm on tour, I'm doing a podcast, fight companion, whatever it is, a big interview, boom, one little boom, pink lemonade, Kratom, what? And it works instantly for me. That's the only brand that I trust to. It's Happy Hippo. So if you want to try Kratom, you want to try the only Kratom you should ever try. If you want to try Kratom that has only one ingredient, we're talking about Kratom, you got to trust my friends at Happy Hippo because the Wild West out there. So visit HappyHippoHerbals.com. Promo code is THICKBOY. You get 20% off for life. Use that code as many times you want. Send it to your friends, your family, your gay aunt, whoever it is. You get 20% off for life of the best Kratom on planet Earth. Go to HappyHippoHerbals.com. Promo code THICKBOY. 20% off for life. Now let's get back to the program from Chatting with Frank Mayer. And actually, you know what? It's funny. He could have been out. See, his leg is right on the back of my knee. If he would have just drove his foot forward, he would yeah, have been push. able to push out. Yep. yep. And his knee line would have came out. But again, he's in it. I he, missed his armpit. This is a language he does not speak. No. Like, he has no clue down there. He was just like, oh, shit, there's pressure on my knee here. Oh. The, knee, the knee bar, I mean, granted, especially if you don't know what you're doing, get really hurt there. No, because he's almost, I mean, I barely actually had it. Yeah. Uh, honestly, an inch and it's not and in And you've been out. Yeah. He's out. But yeah. I think, too, those guys freak out, if, especially if he does. he's not familiar with that, like the pressure on the knee. Yeah. And the knee, well, and it he takes actually, a lot to get going. He too. actually complained to Dana afterwards because Dana told me because he, he complained about Mazzagatti, like, fire that guy because my knee was about to blow out. It was He was telling him. He goes, I'm screaming and tapping. How many times do I got to tap? Yeah. He goes, my knee's about to explode. Yep. I'm screaming here. Because Mazzagatti, you know, if that's why you even see as I'm loading up his leg, I feel him tapping. So I didn't apply more pressure, but I'm not going to let go. Yeah. No. Until the referee comes, right? So I have it locked in, and that's why you actually see me kind of look, and I'm like, well, why is it? Yeah, what are we doing here? Yeah, yeah like, I mean, how many times? I mean, like, I, I won, right? Like, we good? Bro when Brock was complaining, look at Joe with hair there. When Brock was complaining, was Dan like, don't be a pussy, dude. <laughs> I a, think Dan was a like, bar. yeah, that kid's kind of savage on the ground. Yeah, he's like, what did you expect to happen? Now, your dad was there, too. Yeah, my dad's dad almost cornered. Like, yep. He always cornered you. Yeah, my dad was my first martial arts instructor. You know, yeah. He started out uh, uh, owning a Kempo Karate school. My dad came from Cuba, so, like, boxing and wrestling were very big. And so our our Kempo Karate looked very much like above-the-waist kickboxing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... Is your dad still alive? Oh yeah, oh, still nice. healthy. Still, the, 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 I feel like he, Cuban, uh, Cubans last forever. Yeah, he still gets up at you know at five thirty in the morning. He finishes six mile run. You know what I mean? Oh gee, well yeah. that's where your daughter gets yeah, from. Yeah, he's yeah. very similar in that way. There you go. W wakes up early. You know, my dad uh, for every breakfast is the same thing. It's six egg whites with one yolk and a tuna with a little bit of mozzarella to keep it closed, and that's it. You know, I'm like, Savage. Yeah, yeah, he's just yeah. We go on vacation, and I'm like, all right, man. Like, yeah, and I it's love lifting weights, dad. but I ain't getting me to do cardio. No, not vacation, not, it's never no. going to happen. Not, like going if I'm doing cardio, then you better run the same direction I am. There's yeah. something bad back there. <laughs> <laughs> if you see me running on the beach, there's a problem. <laughs> that's kind of cool. That's dope, though. Your dad's always in your corner now. You're in your daughter's corner. Yeah. That's pretty fucking yeah. cool. It man. hasn't worked out yet, but I want him to also, like, the, the Oh, that'd yeah, be cool. That's, yeah, that's one of the, the things. The both of you yeah. and your daughter. Yeah, that's actually why, even now, like, I'm trying to heal up a lot of my injuries and stuff and taking some things seriously. Next year, I'm going to go and fight again because actually, want to fight once on the same card with Bella. Oh, damn. It's my last fight. You oh, know what fuck I mean? yeah. She can headline the card. I can open it. You know what I mean? Type thing. Oh. Like, you know, that way. Like, I can, Are yeah. you your co-main event? She's main event? Yeah. Well, enough that we can corner each other. Enough of a split. Oh, right? yeah. So you can't do that. Yeah, well, we you, could you, do that, but have a swing bout in between or something. Oh, you could or, do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, or something along those lines. Yeah, that'd be you know sick, yeah. dude. I don't, I mean, because. I'd go that? to that. How many times is that going to happen in history? Never. Yeah, yeah. I mean, LeBron was his I mean, barring. You know what I mean? Like lightning striking, you know, a car accident or some retarded, you know, Bella's the UFC champ, whatever champ, whatever league she wants to join. Yeah, I agree. There's just no, there's just, I would take no that brainer. bet. She's much, I mean, it's like me when I look at Bo Nickel. I'm like, what do you think is going to happen to that guy? I'm like, hey, he's a champ, dude. Like, lose weight or, or get a bigger weight class. Yeah, you know, unless he like hits his head at a bar fight or something. That guy's yeah, a big yeah, champ. Yeah, yeah, unless he gets, as you know, hit by a lightning. Stupid, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing. So here's the interim heavyweight championship. And why was it interim? Do you, I'm trying to think what year this was. Um, why was it an interim? Yeah. 
So this is no. Oh, you know what? I think Randy didn't he retire and like give it up or what? No, they came back. Oh well, because then Randy lost to uh, uh, Brock. That's how Brock became champ, right? Yeah, but that wasn't there until the, I don't. Yeah, that's after. You know what? I don't remember. Uh, so and here's the thing though. No, Garrett's only thirty. Is that sad? I don't remember stuff like that. Oh, I don't, it's too hard to keep up. Yeah, I, don't I, don't know. Know. I, I mean, it might be we both have CT, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't think so. You seem pretty smart, not. man. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I just don't, that's the best thing about CT. You don't know they have. You don't know. Yeah, no. I'll forget my car keys. Like, fuck, here we go, dude. <laughs> you know what? My wife uses it on me. That's what pisses me off. No, me I'll be something. I'll go. That, you never said that. She's like, oh, fuck, it's getting bad. I'm like, no, shut up. Like, yeah, you I'll gaslight be, me. I'll do my my girl. Will be like my friend. Bo, I'm like, what's her name? She's like, you've met Natalie ten times. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's like, you're CT. I'm like. Or I just don't give a fuck. Yeah, I put it that? on that. Like, it just wasn't that important to yeah, me. Yeah, I'm like, I literally have too much shit <laughs> yeah, to going on. I just don't. On the level of shit that that ticked yeah, on my life. Yeah, friend's name no. is dead last. Yeah. So keep telling me her name. Uh, yeah, so this is no get 32. No punk at 32. You're still only 29 here. Yeah. Gone to the UFC young. Oh, this fight was nutsos too. Is it, to, I mean, as a jiu-jitsu guy, this has to be one of your favorite fights. Yeah, well, and actually, as far as my career-wise, the second one between us was probably my favorite fight because I was... Oh, I thought this was the second one. This is the first one. This is one. the first one. Yeah. Oh, I like the second one. Yeah. Yeah, I want the second one. Uh, they, They're both good. We can watch both if you yeah, have time. I have I time to watch, watch both. both. Yeah. We so, watch both. So in this one, I had uh, uh, really knew that, like, I'm like, you know what? He really underestimates my stand-up. You know, he has a lot of confidence in stand-up. I'm going to just make sure we just don't go to the ground and kind of throw him for a loop, you know what I mean? And so then when we fought the second time, uh, I was a little too confident with it. That was one of the times I learned in my life, like, hey, just because things went well the first time isn't a guarantee it's yes. going to go safe. You know, I'm like, hey, chill out. You still got to work for it, you know what I mean? And the, but that's where all your years, I mean, we'll get to it when we fight him the second time, but that's where all your years of jiu-jitsu and that muscle memory, because yeah. if I remember correctly, you're kind of out, Not right? Dude, you I get rocked, out. and then you just wake up like, clap. Yeah. No, my wife and I, we actually make jokes about that all the time. So after the fight, she, we're talking and I'm talking. She goes, so like, what do you remember? I'm like, I just was underwater. I kind of felt some legs. I was getting choked. And yeah. then I woke up with a Kimura. Yeah. <laughs> and then she goes, and then I'm watching. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. She goes, you did all of that, like half calm. Like, yeah, if you do something long yeah, enough, yeah, that's it's why second I nature. Them, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know. Muscle memory, you're just yeah. going through that flow She state. goes like, so literally, like, if in your sleep, I'm like, yeah, let's keep that as a story. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but dude, and yeah, this is fucking prime Nogera here, man. Yeah, no, they, they didn't give me very little chance. This is one of the examples I talked about we were talking about on the show with Harrison earlier. When before the fight, no one gave me a chance to win because here's the former Pride champion. I think at the time, like number two fighter in the world. Oh, we were, everyone was so excited. Oh, yeah, it was over with for me, you know what I mean? And again, the UFC is like, here's Frank Mayer. Yeah. You know, it's like beat, beat our po poster boy. And again, if you lose to him, it's not the end of the world. He is fucking pretty famous, pretty freaking good. So it's kind of like a no lose situation for Brock Lesnar for for Noguera. But if you're Noguera, this is exactly where you should be at. You know, yeah. you can't give him any warm up fights. And so, uh, so the you, uh, the discipline here, the strategy was heavy stand up. Yeah, just keep on our feet, keep loose. I felt that he had it was heavy, very heavy footed as a boxer. And then it was actually to open up with hands. And then when he started getting kind of angry, I figured I could play into his ego. Yep. And then if I popped him a few times he would step in aggressive and be heavy with his footwork so then I could start chopping his legs. Yep. You know what I mean? Then he'd be predictable with his footwork. I would know where his foot was landing and he wouldn't be able to sh block as well or move his foot out of the way and I could come down hard and beat up his, uh, his legs. I mean, you're really beating the shit out of him, man. Like, you're really giving it to him. Yeah, here I was actually just kind of screwing with him, like here, because I couldn't get a hard shot off. So I came up, just controlled the ankles and make sure nothing crazy happened. And this, again, was a ploy to really just play into his ego, because he was very confident on the master type of yep. mindset. So I'm like, oh, you know what? That's, you know, it's a, uh, it's a hole. It's a weakness. It's something I can work with. You know, it's like, oh, you got pride. I can work with that. And, and then he really doubled down on his boxing and got way better at boxing. Yeah. He's a good right hand. You know, it's solid. You know what I mean? And, and solid. you know, him and his brother used to go down to the Cuba to box. So I mean, at this point, he's still a really good boxer in his career. Yeah. But I mean, he's throwing no kicks and he keeps his feet flat. You know, he's very much of a boxer. But I mean, it does add to his power. He hits hard. You know. Yeah, he he does. People he don't want to acknowledge does. it. I'm like Ben, the guy. He, no, he. Once he got out of the Muay Thai the stance from the first part of he watched his first part of his career, like when he was in Pride, he fought more of a Thai boxer style, mm -hmm. you know, and his boxing wasn't that great. He threw more kicks and punches, and then once he kind of settled down his stance a little bit, his hands became heavier, and he relied more on his the, the strength, which you know, look at his shoulders and his neck, is uh, you know, 
he hits hard. And when I, you know, I always knew Nogueira was a big deal, you know, especially in our world. But you know, in Brazil, those guys, uh, they're they're uh, Tom Cruise's, yeah, they're Michael they're legendary Jordan's. status. Dude, I didn't realize that. So the UFC initially offered me him in my hometown of Denver. I was like, no, I was young and wild, and everybody, I didn't have anybody on my team go, mm, let's be smart about this. Let's do it in Denver. I was like, no, I want to do it in Brazil. I want to knock him out in front of his home crowd. They're like, uh, okay. So then, you know, obviously we did that. Uh, I ended up getting uh, hit really hard in the face and losing the fight. That would, I, good, I, that would have been much more of a strategy to have him up in Denver, just because I've walked around in Denver. The altitude, like you, yeah. if you don't prepare for that, that's a whole. That you were really fighting the other creature, Boy, especially as a heavier guy. You know Boy, right? I because yeah. I was a cardio guy. And yeah, that would have hurt him. I, I mean, you would have had a Verdum versus Velasquez yes. type situation. Yes, occur. sir. And you just wish somebody on the team like, hey, dude, let's just do it in Denver. Here's the advantages. But everyone's like, yeah, knock him out in Brazil. Oh, which you have knocked him out in Vegas. Oof. And he, he's a guy too. He's thirty two, and he he's in his prime year, but he had so much uh, kind of miles. wear and tilt miles yeah. from the pride days, like getting, yeah, getting picked fucked up by Bob Sapp, Bob Sapp yeah. fucked his neck up. Fedor fights, the same yeah. Fedors. Yeah, the crow cop fights. No, like I mean, he, the kid got ran over by a motor, uh, a pickup truck, yeah. a dump truck when That's he was nine years old. Oh, yeah. He's back, yeah. So I mean, he's definitely faced a lot of adversity, which made for his mental toughness. But I mean, eventually the body, you know. It can only answer that call so many times. Yeah, and then it catches up with you. But you're already having success on the feet, so you're getting pretty confident here. Yeah, which I took, that up, I that built it into it. You know, and then the footwork I understood because we st I could walk with my punches on them and step outside the lead leg or step inside, you know, stepping on a triangle at all times as I was attacking to mm -hmm. make sure I didn't come down the middle. I mean, but you're absolutely dominating him. Even on the ground, the ground and pounds working for you. On the feet, you're landing. He's he really hasn't done much here. No, I mean, this, this it, it, today's uh, UFC. This is a ten eight round. Yeah, I thought so too. And actually, after the end, when they called, it was a ten nine. I'm like, holy shit, what do I have to do to get a ten eight round? Oh, yeah, back then you had to literally kill. Yeah, you literally have to, you have to kill chop somebody. his head off. Like, all right, ten nine. Yeah, which is actually messes me up because sometimes I'll still watch fights. Like, oh, that's not a 10 I'm like, yeah, no, it is. Because I would have thought that was to begin with, but I kind of got, you know, uh, jaded by uh, yeah, not, condition, yeah, 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 a yeah. condition that, like, you yeah. had to kill somebody. Dude, even now it's fucking tough to get 10-8. Like, I'll watch some rounds, I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's a 10-8. And they go 10-9. I'm like, what in the yeah. world are they watching? Now, now, I, now, I assume you got paid more for this one than the first fight. Yeah. Did you make some real money on this one? You remember? Mm. Yeah, a lot of, oh, my God, that right hand, man. And that's the end of the bell. Yep. I do remember they took me to the back and bonused me. This was the first time I think I actually got a backroom bonus. Like the discretionary bonus? Yeah, Those yeah, are fun. Yeah. I was like 250 Ooh, which okay. I thought was, you know, at that time, that was more than I actually made for the fight. So That may make sense, yeah. though. And this is when you guys were allowed to have sponsors. I mean, you are yep. sponsored up. Echo, which I loved Echo. Yeah. I was with Echo for years. Yeah, what do you got? Echo, you got that tilt. You get some good money makers on there. Uh, Nutribolics. Nutribolics, yep. I actually still do stuff with Nutribolics. Do you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sick. Good group of guys. Yeah, I just, this. Jason and I. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jason, what's the other guy's name? I, I've met those guys. Yeah, Jason Weiner and then. Uh, uh, that's funny. I have a funny story. I'll tell you off here because I don't want to let their secret go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a funny thing with the name. It's hilarious. <laughs> um. Yeah, I just remember this, there was so much hype in this fight because the hardcores knew no girl from the Pride days yeah. and all this legendary shit out oh, there. They thought that actually, the you know how many people told me afterwards the fight was fixed? I'm like, guys, I'm good and he's good. But I mean, that really, like, you think we orchestrated this as a fix? You, you think Noguera agreed to get his ass whooped yeah. in the first round like <laughs> that? He's a legend. He's like, yeah. yeah, let's do this. If it was a fixed fight, he would have been beating my ass. Correct. And then make a mistake and then I caught him with something. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, or, so like, or if it was fixed, he would, he would for sure win. Right. Like, you know, you yeah. put a lot of. He money was supposed in. to win. This yes, fight. correct. Uh, were you an underdog on the Vegas cards? Yep. Do you remember? Oof. Oh yeah, yeah. That right uh, uppercut keeps landing for you. Yeah, just again, he does it. He keeps his hands, and then spreads his elbows so the center lines open. So just I would throw a strike up, and and then that time it was like a, like a shovel jab, and just step off center. And even as good as he was at jujitsu, you know, he's one of the legends of it. I felt like your jujitsu in modern MMA just was more kind of dangerous yeah that make, like you're to me like don't get me wrong he's dangerous but you on the ground frank Mayer, it's fucking dangerous well I, I have more of a catch wrestling style i always tell people that, that, that is more akin to what works in mma Oof. whereas 
you know, he still was able to do a lot of stuff. I mean, look how many triangle finishes he had. Oh, I know. Triangles are hard to finish against two guys who know what they're doing. Especially you know I mean? like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, when's the last time you saw one? Uh, yeah, you know, it's it, it, it statistically hard to get. I mean, I don't even remember the last time Broly and I've ever been caught in a triangle. You know what I mean? And I don't remember the last time I've caught anybody who's a blue belt or higher in, in a, a triangle? triangle. That's tough. You know what I mean? Like, if you say, hey, when's the last time you caught a brown belt in a triangle? I'm like, never. Like I you just don't. don't like, it, it, I mean, with a gi, maybe, but no gi, no. Yeah. And then now we're punching each other. Yeah, they happen, yeah, man. It's very difficult. Yeah, that's a bad knockout. There's your pops again, man. Crunk. Yeah. How could you not be? Boom. Yeah, that straight left was there all day. And then you got. I remember uh, as as your career started going too. You got really into. You, weren't you boxing with the. Uh, the boxing team down there in Vegas? Yeah, like You a ton. got really into boxing. I got really excited. But I even started sparring with, like, uh, Bermain Stiverne. Yeah. And going, I mean, I put on boxing shoes, wear a helmet, and go in there and go, okay, we're Both boxing, things. boxing. To a fault. To a point where, like, I kind of took it too far. Yeah. And it started messing up my – and that's why in the Mark Hunt fight, you see me actually do some things I would have done from because it was too much boxing sparring. Yeah. And they got caught right on the ear. And then I watched them, like – yeah, that's that would have done that. I do that all the time, boxing, but I can't do that in the you know. So that's when I was like, all right, look, all the arts, jujitsu, boxing, wrestling, they're great, but if you take them too down, too far, they actually get you hurt doing oh, it. And MMA, a lot of know? guys fall into that kind of trap because you think about like, uh, you know, Andre Arlovski when he's working at wild card, yeah. his stance got real narrow, and they start getting beat up. And you're yeah. like, what are you doing? Dude? Yeah, I mean, and, and you could do with all the arts. Not one is more prone not to making that mistake. I mean, no, they all have their faults. If, if you, you take jujitsu to it. super high level, it's like, well, now you're going to get, you know, you know it, it doesn't work anymore. Like, all the basics work, and then it's integrating them together with a timing, you know. It's its own art being in MMA, you know. And this, uh, I think this fight was right after uh, I fought No Gear, so I was really rooting for you here, because he beat me. I was like, "Come on, Frank, yeah, get some." Because actually, in. that for the fight, because you and I were talking, because we're like, "Oh, oh that's right." We were I was like, "Yeah, we fought. Yeah, let's work it out. We'll talk." Yeah, because we'll me and Frank, cause I remember because I beat, uh, I think I beat Gonzaga, I beat Crow Cop, and you were doing an interview, and I've always been a fan of yours, right, forever. And I remember you doing an interview, and you're like, "Yeah, that Brendan Schaub looks good." And I was like, "Oh shit." Yeah, but I mean, it was, and then I remember because a lot of guys don't understand this. But I remember we went backstage and met, like, "Hey, man, we tell the fight." Yeah, 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 talk this, that. I'm like, all right, this is the business. Everybody has to. You got to have an opponent across from your face, and it's just it's weird when these guys get too upset. Because I always tell people, "Hey, you know what? If right now during the fight, any fight, anybody's fighting, if they cut the power, they go, all right, fights are over with. Sorry, people, go home, and we're all gonna go next door and drink beer." Yeah, you know who most likely I'd probably be drinking with? Yeah. The guy that I was fighting against, right? Like, who do I have Someone the most? I can relate to. Yeah, it's like, well, yeah. we got the most in common. We have the same interests, yep. likes. We understand the yep. same sacrifices. You know, we're on the same page. You know, so when people are like, oh, you hate the guy you're fighting, I'm all, like, that's like playing, like, do you think the guy playing DN hates the offensive Yeah, I never hated like, anybody. No. I didn't need that motivation. Yeah, I was rooting for you hard here because uh, no Gary came, you know, knocked me out in Brazil. And then uh, what's funny about that is – I remember the, I was a big favorite over Noguera in Brazil because he's older and I was the young buck coming off the Crow Cop knockout. And then uh, the plan with the UFC goes, yeah, you beat him. Uh, they told my coach, you're probably going to get Brock Lesnar next for, you know, and then fight for the time. I'm like, oh, I'm going to start this old Brazilian dude. I just overlooked them. Yeah. Was, you know, I, I did too here. At this just point, young. after the first fight, I was like, oh, you know what? He's not gotten more athletic. He hasn't gotten That's more light point. on his feet. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, so this is going to look exactly like the first one. And you molly, like that, that, the, the, the if that second round we went to score uh, ten eight again, yeah, he, he, it wasn't a very you know competitive fight, and then so I, I can get how you like oh this could be another walk in the park. Yeah, I'm surprised he took it to be honest. I mean, it's oh he there. wanted it so bad, I and he really had it in his mind that yeah he just you know I think with our first fight he said he had staph infection, he had a knee injury, it was everything. I mean that's why it's something I kind of made jokes. I'm like dude the guy had AIDS, you know I mean, yeah, like, yeah. I mean it was every excuse in the book why he lost the fight. I'm like you know just. Fighting's like poker, man. Like, I mean, there's a lot of skill involved, but there's a lot of luck, too. 100%. Sometimes the hand you get dealt that day is the hand you get dealt, you know what I mean? And so, uh, you know, sometimes guys just have a hard time just wrapping their brain around that. I'm like, hey, guys, you're not fighting a dude from the bar. You're not fighting some guy that doesn't train. That's all this guy does. Well, we both are just real good fighters, you know what I mean? Like, I, there's days I go in the gym and I roll with guys, and I'm like, oh, today's a good day. There's days I go in there and same guy I tapped the day before, now I'm getting caught. I'm like, shit, yep. you know what I mean? We're all... Within inches of each other. And everyone has their off days, too. Like, did you have any fights where you woke, like, I'd wake up and I'm like, God, I don't feel like doing this. Yeah, no, I've had. I'm like, fuck. Literally, can I do it tomorrow? No. And the, the time I felt like that, I always had bad nights in the office. I remember the Roy Nelson in the finale. I just woke up and I'm like, man, if we could just do this tomorrow, I'd be stoked. 
Like, that's not how it works, dumbass. No. That's why, actually, too, like, with so much about training and conditioning with Bella when she trains, there's, there's so much about me trying to prime her up for certain, like, okay, you don't feel good today, we're not going to explode. You have to, today's an explosive day. Let's not do it. But there are days when it's like, okay, today we're supposed to do this. You know, feel like, you know what, we're going to do it anyways. Yeah. The, today isn't about the physical aspect of what we're going to do. It's all about. mental. Today's a mental day. You know, you don't want to do it. I'm going to go ahead and watch, not let her know that, and make sure that there's no injuries that occur because she's not, you know, in the green zone right now. She's got to fight through it. But we're going to learn how to go ahead and compete yep. when we're off. Yep. Because sometimes you do, especially with women. You know what I mean? There's there's more aspects of them being off than us. You know what I mean? Oh, that yeah. I'm learning about. That yeah, I'm like, that. what do we got to deal with? Like yeah. I'm having to, like coaching a female is not like it's different. Whole, it's different. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's you, a, some similarities and there's some that just aren't. And yeah. There's a lot more to it. Yeah, no care. Oh, that shot rung my bell. Yeah, that was. <laughs> and he landed some good shots before that. Yeah. Then you shoot in. Yeah, shot in, grabbed shot the leg. In. I was able to build up here. And then I'm sitting there building up. And really, honestly, like, I mean, we're like, besides my hand holding onto that ankle. Thank God that's the, was the only thing that kept her from stopping the fight. He goes for that guillotine, really royally fucked yep. up there. Yeah, so I was able to for pull that out too. Yep, to keep out of the arm bar from that. I blocked. I thought I was in a half guard sweep him. I was like, okay, is this tight? Yeah, oh yeah, it was super tight. But then just, this is. I'm still actually asleep, so I'm just watching it. And as you guys hear me commentating right now, I can't tell you what was going through my head. I'm still asleep. This isn't me. This you're, is you're this, still out of it. This is my reptilian brain. Yes, I'm still not awake. But it, still look at not awake. Look at this. I don't remember any of this. But even the movement, stepping no, over the head. No, that's not me yet. Look at you. I'll tell you when I woke up. And look, he's grimacing there. And then this is the worst break of all time. I woke so up here. For the staff who have seen That's it, when I woke ready. up. I was like, oh, shit, I got an arm. And I'm kind of like waking up. Boom! Yeah. <laughs> the worst injury you can get. You're talking about spiral fracture. Yeah. The I think that actually that. was one of the worst. Well, maybe Nick, some of the shin breaks. Barring like the Anderson and the Mar my, uh, you know. Uh, those aren't as bad because those guys, you know, those, those guys are doing it to themselves. Yeah. This though, the torque on that fucking. Yeah, yeah spiral remember? fracture. I think it broke his arm in like nine different places. The humor said have a spiral. He's out halo a hot second. Yeah. They thought it ended his career, actually. I did. Oh. My God. I mean, literally, I mean. Well, we've watched, you know, the Tim Sylvia submission, this submission you're talking about, top five all time. This one, I, I number one, just for what Nogueira stood for, his jiu-jitsu, his yeah. background, he refused to tap. Like, Nogueira was like, man, I'd rather die than tap. You're like, say less. <laughs> Check this out. Yeah, I'm like, well, be careful what you ask And for. again, just the torque on this, and you're kind of out of it. Yeah. And just look how you're just chopping through like butter, dude. The transition. Yeah. Look yeah. at this. Yeah, I bladed Clearing the legs. The legs yep. Get the side control. Stepping over the head. You're still kind of out of it. And he's grimacing right here already. Now, most guys would tap here. Most guys would tap there. He's just rolling. Things yeah. can get out of it. Oh, my God, dude. And that's why you don't tap the train to make people tap. I mean, one of the, I mean, one of the greatest submissions of all time, man. Yeah. Did you look at Herb and go, that one broke, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you want to double check this one, buddy? <laughs> like you guys fucked me over the Sylvia fight. Everyone was being no, mean. No, no, Herb was good on me. Herb he was, he was on my yeah. side on that one. I'm like, yeah. hey, man, I don't think they're going to be confused on this one. I, I made your job easier tonight. Yeah, I'd wink at Herb like, bet they don't get confused about this yeah. one. Which is kind of funny that Herb had to ref both of the probably the That's most vicious hilarious. submissions I've ever done on I, dude, whole, I mean, the most vicious submissions. And he's just in the back, the whole entire medical team's back. Oh, there. yeah. I mean, his arm is just a nightmare. They had he to, was in pain. Oh, too, they, they, they had to put him almost in like a, like a <sighs> complete brace to be able to even walk him to the Enjoy back. Enjoy that flight back to Brazil. Nightmare, dude. They have Rogan Rogan's like, holy shit. Yeah. Actually, and for that submission, that was the, that year I won at the MMA Awards. Submission of the year and comeback of the year. Both in the same night. Really? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it was a good. Yeah, night. yeah. Come back to the year. I mean, that you were. Oh, I was rocked. Yeah, you're gonna. I mean, like I said, like afterwards when I'm going through this is because Lindell, the jiu coach that came up to me, is like, "What happened?" So he's like, yeah. "All right, you high hipped him here." He's like explaining to me what I did. He goes, "And you, you blocked the shins. You came over. You cut. You came through. You lost. You went too deep over the top. You re-rolled him. You kept it, the head out. You know, and then pinned the head down." I'm like, all right. I got you. Yo, that sounds sweet. All right, man. cool. I got you. So yeah. I went back and translated it. I was like, all right, cool. I'll tell you what I did. But yeah, until the, I came up on the second roll, like I never remember the first roll. Because people were asking me the first roll. I'm like, so we, we rolled twice? I don't remember Oof. that. And yeah, then I, when I watched the video, shit. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Super high level. Just the transitioning, all the, the flow. It's so filthy, man. American jiu-jitsu assholes. That's yeah, definitely on the map now. Yeah. Boom. I mean, oof. 
And I assume for that one, this, this one you're making kind of big boy money at this point. Uh, I think I made 400. Yeah. That was actually the pinnacle of my career probably as most as I was making 400 for fights. You know what I mean? That's insane. Yeah. yeah, I think the most money I ever made for a fight was the Brock fight, uh, UFC 100. I made like 600. Interesting. Only six up discretionary bonus? Because that UFC that 100 was part kicked of it. ass. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. at that time, I hadn't had the $400,000 win. I think I was on, like, you know, whatever it was, a win, and, like, you know, like, you know 150 and 150. Mm-hmm. And they made it up to where it was, like, over 600. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Is it, now, is that the, I forget which fight Brock gets on the mic, and he's like, I'm not drinking this yeah. Bud Light yeah. bullshit. They were so mad. Yeah, at he was mad at Coors or Bud Light. Yeah. Or I'm gonna have a Coors. He was mad at Bud. He's like, I'm going to drink Coors. Yeah. And then Dana just, like, beat it out of yeah, him. Yeah, corrected him on that one. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? Oh, you have so many fights I do this all fucking day. Yeah, that was cool. Hell yeah, that was, was cool. <laughs> When's the last time you watched them? A couple of those, uh, not in years, man. You know, dude, we did one of these shows with my buddy Eric Griffin, who's a comic who knows nothing about fighting. So it's me educating him on fighting. And the first episode we did is we watched all my losses. Have you ever watched all your losses? Yeah. I want to slip my fucking throat. Oh, that's rough. Oh my god. It was. Yeah. It's brutal, man. Yeah. I think we ended on the Nogueira fight. Yeah, it was awful. Yeah, awful. Was- but these were fun. Yeah, these were good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> next time we'll go over some losses. Yeah, it depends on the you know some people don't want to tell their losses. Man. Like, we gotta make sure I have a room. I'm not gonna go home for the night get a little drunk. Like right? Frank slurring his words. I'm like, hey, it's compensating. <laughs> Might have to have your therapist on standby. Yeah, yeah. Here we just watch Frank's losses, man. Yeah. <laughs> but that did those bring good memories to you? Oh yeah, definitely. You know what's actually the most exciting thing now in my life is that like there's times like you know my, the way my house is laid up, my kids. Rooms are on the other side of the house, basically, you know? And so, like, I'll walk over there to go say goodnight or go see what they're doing from my bedroom. And I walk over, and there's been a couple times, like, you know, Cage, my, you know, my, my, uh, my middle son, my 16-year-old, you know, I'll open the door as I walk in. He's on the iPad. He's watching Dad fight. Oh, you know? like he's, wow. you know? And That's so, cool. like, that, like, chokes me up. There's times where I'm just like, you know, because you always want to be your kid's hero. You 100%. Know I mean? Like, you know, and there's a day that he's going to look at me as just a man and see me as, as valuable and, and all the flaws that obviously every man possesses. But it's cool just to be your kid's a superhero. There's, it's a small amount of time in life that you get to be that. And I, you know, and some men never afford themselves that opportunity. You Agreed. Know? And, I, and I have that opportunity. And so I sit there, I look, I'm like, oh, man, right. And the, all my kids are just, and I know every dad says this, but like mine, I can actually sit down with a chalkboard and show you they're superior to me. Yeah. <laughs> they are far and above yeah. better than what I ever was. Yep. And, you know, Cage already is a freshman. Uh, his freshman year, he won state at 195 for 4A at Bishop Gorman. Oh, he's a big kid. Yeah. And then uh, Bishop uh, Gorman's good at yeah. school, too. And so he's, yeah, he second string linebacker as a sophomore, the number four team in the country. And he's second string on the varsity. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, I got a funny story. I'll tell you, we'll end off with, with Cage because everybody talked Bella. And then Roro, he's 13, so he's still making stories. It's, it's also, too, like, you know, even though their dad's Frank Mir, this UFC legend, sometimes kids, they just view you as dad. So yeah. they're not really into, like, the stuff you're into. So when he beat a senior. So oh, that's him stepping jacked. off the mat. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a, that's oh, a freshman freaks. in high school. Jesus you know, he benching 315 already. But the summer before his freshman year started. Oh, you're doing some savages. Yeah, yeah, he squats 455. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so uh, he's quick as hell. We're actually, now he's just working with a speed coach so we can get him faster. I think he probably runs like a 4.9 right and now. It's, right? And he's into fo- football's the dream or is football. wrestling? Football. He likes to hit people and inflict pain. Which is funny because you meet Cage. He's the soft spoken. He's, he's a straight A student name. Gorman. And all the time. I'm, this the other day. I'm sitting there and it's like his phone is blowing up. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? He tested in the top 1.3 percent of the nation for mathematics. So he's sitting there and all the other kids in. I have all of my kids in private school the whole time, you know. And so they're, all his buddies are calling him up to help, and he's tutoring him through math to the point where I'm like, dude, sorry, I don't know the cash app your ass. Yeah, it's all. also like, hey, you know dude, I mean, hey, I'll answer the phone. Hopefully, you paid for this. Yeah, that's what I said. I'm yeah. like, dude, like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you, you're at school all day long. You have football practice till seven o'clock at night like now it's time they're helping your friends out they, but he's just a great kid which is weird because you sit there he's the most loving like like people sit there and go oh he's a gentle giant but man when he straps a helmet on it's that's just, what he counts oh he like he tries to murder people like kickoffs he's just, and like i get terrified because football scares the shit out of me yeah i'm everybody go, oh you're scared your daughter fights i'm like no i'm terrified my boys play football the whole time i'm just sitting there i'm like oh I please know. please it's please brutal. like every kickoff i feel like i'm dying i'm like yeah. oh please this cage is a missile he's just trying 
trying to rip someone's head off. He just his goal in life is to someone to leave on a stretcher. Jesus Christ. Like that's what he just wants to do. He just wants to hit someone so hard He's that they far die. That. You know what I yeah, mean? Like they just far that. Yeah, you know, all the coaches love him because he just just wrecks people when he yeah. hits them, you know what I mean? And so so anyways, so his freshman year, he he's up on varsity and they're like, "Look, you're not going to get any playing time, kid." You know what I mean? We're a top, you know, national competitive yeah, team. Right. So you can be on varsity to say you're on varsity, but you're going to get this much playing time. We'll put you down at JV so that you can play the whole time. So he's on JV his freshman year, you know, and at first he wasn't happy about that, but he, he got to play. They're like, hey, look, next year as a sophomore, you're going to be the backup behind a kid who's like a five. EA Still as a freshman. EA at is a phenomenal insane. linebacker, yeah. the kid that's ahead of him. You know what I mean? He's like, so then your junior year, you know, you're going to play some games. When we play, you know, home teams, you'll start. You know, you're always going to get in the second half once we're up 70 to zero. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, like, your junior year, you're going to start, and your senior year, you'll be one of the best linebackers in the country. You know yeah. I mean, this is your projection. Here's the plan. Yeah, here's your plan. Well, all right, cool, buy along. So, my one of my favorite stories is we're sitting there at the uh, the the JV banquet, right? So football. So they're sitting there and they're giving out the different awards. I thought Cage was going to get the defensive player of the year award, and he didn't. So I know he's disappointed. I'm disappointed. So they give out what's called the Gale Award, right? And it's supposed to be like basically like you know you embody. So they sit there and go, this kid, if you were to cut him, would bleed you know orange and blue. There are their colors. You know he's one of the most hardest hitting. This they're just saying all these great things about this kid, right? And they're like, in fact, the only down part about him is if you see him after practice, if you don't have a half hour, don't let him catch your ass because he's in a talk to you he's friendly he's lovely like like i'm like sitting there and i'm like going man i hope cage is friends with this kid man like this kid's a kid sounds this kid's an awesome human being you know what i mean like cage like who's that kid make sure you get his number like yeah like you need to be hanging out with that kid and say go the only freshman on the team to start and then that's when I was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. So I Cash. grabbed my wife. I'm like, babe, I'm like trying to get my phone because I'm like, why didn't someone tell me? I would, yeah. be, I would have recorded this, Fuck you know? Yeah. So I'm trying to grab my phone. She goes, what are you doing? I'm like, they're talking about Cage. She goes, they are? I'm like, yeah. only for, And then as soon as I'm trying to argue with her, like, they're talking about Cage. And she's caught off guard, too. They're like, Cage, mirror. And I'm just like, wow. You know, it was just funny. Cool, I'm sitting there, man. This kid's awesome. Who yeah, is this, this kid? This kid sounds great. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's Cage. I'm like, oh, the, my only complaint was, I'm like, because someone would have told us. So I, I know, you made a heads up. I mean, don't tell your kid. Like, I won't tell him, but I'm going yeah. you know I mean? like, still want that. Yeah, I'm dad, you know what I mean? There's a moment. You know I mean? record yeah. everything. Yeah. But yeah, you want your kids to look at you as, as heroes. But with your dad, they, they kind of take it for granted, you know? Yeah. Like Tony Hawk was telling this story, his kids in the skateboarding. And he said he comes home and him and his friends are like watching uh, professor skateboarders on their iPad. And they're like, oh, that this move is whatever, 360 or 180. And, uh, uh, Tony Hawk, he walks by. He's like, "Oh no, I." I uh, he's like, "I actually uh, created that move. That's a, a three six And like, get out of here. And he's like, "All right." Just went up to his room. He's like, "They have no fucking." <laughs> he's like, "I get no respect, man. No respect." So sometimes you're just dad. Yeah. But I, I love it, man. Your kids are monsters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd be down to go to Iowa wrestling. Yeah. And then uh, when you guys compete on the card, I'll be there as Carver well. Carver Stadium. Yep. Dude, you're a legend. Thank you, brother. One of my faves, man. Nah, man I always enjoy You know, any, out, yeah. anytime you need anything, man. Yeah, we got to do this more often, man. I always have a blast signal. hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah, dude. You're the best. Frank me, everybody. If you're into Thick Boys, <laughs> like, subscribe, comment, and God bless America. Well, that's not my big one. Just kidding.